Morning. Good morning. Is it on, it is on right? Yes. Okay. All right. I can't tell, so I'd like to welcome everybody. I'm Alex Milligan. I'm filling in this morning. Pastor Deb had an, another uh, another engagement to go to today, and so uh, uh, Pastor uh, Overby will be here next week. So we, 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 just, we asked that he wait until uh, after the Bridge Festival, so, so he's going to come next week. So I uh, invite everybody to come next week because this will be the first Sunday for our new minister. So it, uh, we're, excited. we're excited to have this new chapter start next week. Uh, the announcements are in the bulletin. Um, are there any other announcements to... to at this time before we we'll, we'll, we'll do prayer concerns too but uh, later on but uh, there's no any other announcements uh, we did reschedule the uh, Ag Council meeting for this Wednesday I didn't I just put it in there it's, I don't see it in there but uh, but we are going to have it uh, we are going to have it this Wednesday last day of the Bridge Festival in our parking lot Susan and Greg uh, headed that up this year and according to the the information I've been getting it looks like it's been very successful and I think Randy's I don't know how Randy's I didn't get a chance to talk to him but uh, so he's he's pretty good I told him that uh, we've had trouble as you know back here in the back with the roof leaking and uh, so uh, we've we've gotten a hold of uh, some uh, bids on that, and when when I saw Susan's posting or Greg's posting the other day, I thought, well, that's about going to cover that roof. It uh, so, but God provides all ways. So 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 we so we probably have the roof. So I would like to welcome Kevin today and 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 uh, Debbie and and uh, for, for, for the ex extra singing today that we're going to have. So um, the other thing I do want, and I'll, I'll talk about it a little bit later, and uh, I, I'm going to use a, a, a sermon from uh, Carol's uh, grandfather. And uh, he, he was a Methodist minister probably back in the 20s, 30s, 40s, and 50s. And, and so I... Uh, I have, and I'll show it to you later, but I have all of 
or quite a few of his uh, Carol Carol uh, uh, got got the actual uh, the, the, and and he hand wrote everything because back then they had to submit them and they were they they were uh, had to be approved by by by, by the uh, I don't think it was called the conference then but uh, but they were approved then so anyway I'll get into that more so with that if we would stand and join in the praise praise songs. Please join me in the in the midst of meaninglessness. I call us to meaning, O oh God. In the midst of divided, div, 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 
dividedness. You call us to community through Christ. Out of our brokenness, you call us to one witness and new life in the Spirit. In praise and thanksgiving, let us worship God. Please join me in the opening prayer. We come to worship because for us to live is Christ. We live for Christ. We live by Christ. We live with Christ. We live through Christ. We live in Christ. God of grace, let Christ be praised in all we say and do, in all we think and speak, in this hour of worship, in every moment of our lives. Amen. So if the children would come forward. Okay, this is a this is a new thing for me. Okay, so we're kind of both on on uh, on maiden voyage here. So I just wanted to tell this is the the theme today is is uh, I, I guess because of the bridge festival we we, we want to kind of go back in into time and and uh, and uh, look, look at look, look at how services were were done back before we were all born and. And I think about uh, Mrs. Melligan's grandfather. He was a Methodist minister down in southern Indiana, and uh, and he had uh, he had he had, he had uh, five children. He had he had Clarice, Maxine, Adeline, Annas, and Leroy, and they were all pretty pretty stair step children, kind of like you guys. They were just one after the other, and. So they, uh, of course, they, they, they came, they, they went to church every Sunday, and they, they probably sit right up there where Mr. and Mrs. Holiday are. And the church that they were at at this time was, was, was a little country church, and, and it had the windows like this, but you could raise them and lower them, not like ours. And it was hot that day, really hot, and the windows were open. And uh, the minister was, was Waller. And he uh, he was uh, he was preaching, and uh, it was Adeline, the the, the middle child. She was kind of she was kind of being restless over there and sitting right there with with the others. And they uh, and he kept watching her, and she was kind of and and their mom could couldn't get her to settle down because there was there was five of them, so they. And the baby, Leroy, was the baby, and she was probably taking care of him. And so he just kept watching her. He just kept preaching. And all of a sudden, because this is from Carol's mom, from Mrs. Melligan's mom, Maxine, she said, Grandpa Waller just walked right down, kept preaching the whole time, and walked right down to the, to the pew and took Adeline and lifted her up and put her outside the window, right down, right down outside the window on, on the grass. And so she was put her outside the building. So he went right back up and never never quit preaching the whole time. And pretty soon here she come through the door and she sat back down and this time she sat there and she didn't she didn't she didn't she, she was well behaved then. So I go back to the Proverbs twenty two six and it says, Teach your children to choose the right path. And when they are older, they will remain upon it. So I think about Adeline, how she got that lesson that day, that she uh, probably needed to have a lesson that time to be taught into the right path. And at that point, that had to be a lesson that she learned, and that she probably didn't do that one again and be embarrassed. So let's close with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we're so thankful for this day. And we just ask, Lord, as our children come to us, that we show them that right path in their lives and in our lives. And as we get older, that we see that path and that we always follow it. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes, Martha has a, a, a lesson down there.
that if you want to go down. Had to look at my bulletin. I'm going to change ch change just a little bit. If we would, I would I would like to go ahead and uh, take the offering now. So if the ushers would uh, would come forward, we'll, we'll we'll do the offering now. Sorry, Mark. That's going to. Blessed God of all creation, we offer gifts that are but tokens of gratitude for the uncomprehensible gifts, freely gifts. As we leave our gifts in your hands, we pray for senses heightening to see your masterpiece creation all around us. To your glory, we pray. Amen. You may be seated. So we come to our time of prayer and in your insert there are prayer concerns that we've that, that we have and that you can uh, take those home with you um, and have those in your prayer concerns this week are there any others to, to add to the list today Okay. So if you would we go to the God to the to the Father in prayer. Father, we're so thankful for this day. We just ask, Lord, that as we as we go into this fall season and we see the we see the trees and the uh, we see the trees and the uh, changing of the of the seasons, that we know that your hands are always there. That even though we have this change in the seasons, that we have the constant. Uh, the consistency of, of your of your love is always there. We just allow that. We just pray that you allow us to work to be that beacon 
for you that, uh, that guides us in the light that shines in your path, that we can be that light for others. We lift those up on the prayer concerns that we've, we've had listed in our bulletin, spoken and unspoken. And as we go into this day, we just remember the prayer that Jesus taught the disciples as he said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass each other. And give us the temptation that deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So we'd like to welcome Kevin and Carol for our special music today. I thank Kevin again for being here with us this morning. Um, we're doing two numbers today. The first one is not an old hymn. It's, uh, the title is Your Love Awakens Me. But the second one is, and it's I'd Rather Have Jesus, and I'm sure some of you will remember it as we start singing it. It was written by George Beverly Shea.
be his than have riches untold. I'd rather have Jesus than houses and land. Yes, I'd rather be held by his The title of this is, Are You an Evangelist? And it was written by Carol's grandfather. His name was Reverend Ellie Waller. The Ellie stands for Reverend Elias Waller. And at this time, he was in Petersburg, Indiana. He uh, preached uh, mainly in the southern part of Indiana, some northern Kentucky, uh, probably 30s, 40s, and 50s. Carol said that she did get to hear him preach when she was a girl. Uh, he was just doing a fill-in at that time. He didn't have a, he didn't have a church. So uh, we, have, uh, we have some of his sermons. And like I say, the sermons had to be submitted to, uh, to, to get the approval from, I don't think it was a conference. It was, it was a, an organization that, that went through them. So. This is a sermon that he gave uh, on, on evangelism. So I, I want to give this and in, uh, in, in, in tribute to him. He starts out, it says, Evangelism means the earnest effort of Christians to win men to Christ. Evangelism is a broad word and embraces every agency that turns the thoughts and heart to Christ. From the first word of religious instruction spoken to the little child, to the last message of gospel encouragement and hope whispered to the aged man or woman. The great Christian conviction that lie back in evangelism. The church of today needs a new vision of the worth of a soul. Every Christian needs to get a vision of the great price our Savior paid for human souls on Calvary. First, the soul winner must have a witness with the Holy Spirit that is a child of God from Romans 8.16. 
Second, lay aside every weight of sin that doth easily beset us. Hebrews 11, 1 and 2. Third, prayer. The effectual fervent prayer of the righteous man availeth him much. From James 5, 16. And fourth, faith. Faith is the giving substance to things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Hebrews 2, 12, 1. And finally, fifth, self-sacrifice. If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Matthew 6, 16, 24. Christ's life was a constant denial, denial of self, from Bethlehem to Calvary. The message we bring to men of, in our evangelism, the Bible is the only instrument needed, and the equipment is the knowledge of the scripture. Help the sinner to see the great needs of Jesus Christ, our loving Savior, who died on the cross for everyone because he loved every human being and their souls were precious to him. Use tact, earnestness, perseverance, and tenderness. Have the burden of lost souls upon your heart. Show them how they are needed to help in the service of our Savior. Christ came to seek and save the lost. That is the goal and objective of ever evangelism and all Christians in the Christian ministry. And he gave some apostles and some, and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, and for the edifying of the body of Christ. Ephesians 4, 11, and 12. We lack personal workers in our churches today. The first business of all Christians is to serve God. This is God's purpose. The method of evangelism changed, but the importance of evangelism is just as great today as it was hundreds of years ago. There is a message of help from Christianity to meet the goals, to meet the needs of every individual, and the message of good news for the social life as well. The preaching mission and pastoral evangelism, a large percentage of the members of our churches were one to Christ and the church through some kind of evangelism effort. The most effective evangelism is a pastoral evangelism. This has clearly been seen by experience. All pastors should be on fire with the evangelistic message of God's love for all mankind. We believe that the world is ready to hear about Christ when he is presented as the Savior of the world. Preaching is the chief work of the ministry and is the, me is the means divinely appointed for the extension and enlarging of the kin kingdom of Christ. The ideal must be pure and high. The pattern must be the teaching of our Savior. In this pattern, we will be, we will, we will, we will be found training in self-knowledge and awakening unknown powers and lead to the higher attainments. All this is needed in the pastoral mission. And one can't be successful soul winner unless they have found Christ and accepted him in their hearts and lives. Speaking the word of God is the highest element of worship. And this links together with the heartfelt experience with, with, will accomplish great things for the kingdom of God. Nothing but the living Christ will meet the need of the living present. And nothing can take the place of Jesus himself made known, made known to the hearts and minds of men by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, the oral preaching mission is the most effective and impressive effort to meet the needs and requirements of the day. The preaching mission is a movement divided into four distinct periods, generally 10 days for each period, which are preceded by many weeks of careful and prayerful preparation. The first one is the period of friendly con canvas to create a spiritual atmosphere and a spiritual expectation. Second, the period of public evangelism, music and deeply spiritual services in which there is preaching of the gospel and the appeal to the unconverted to accept Christ as Lord and Savior. And third, the period of visitation evangelism, evangelism campaign. This period should be carefully planned and followed a great spiritual movement. And fourth, the period of spiritual crusade. This period is for the purpose of training new converts to, for membership and, f and of reorganizing his entire church on a strictly spiritual basis. This period, this period is followed by the communion of the Lord's Supper. 
The church school furnishes many ways and opportunities for evangelism. First, the pastor must have the cooperation of the superintendent and teachers and also of the parents. The early training of the child begins in the home. The parents are the first ones to instill the desire and habits of the child. Then the Sunday school with the teacher's tact and love and interest of each child in their class. Visit the homes of the children. Find out their surroundings and contacts. The use of the right kind of literature. Give the children something to do. Show them that they have a part in each service and no one else can fill their place. Teach the children that, God's love each one, that God loves each one of them and needs him in his service. Teach them above all to be reverent and honor God and his house. The goal should be the standards taught of teaching of Jesus. To be kind to one another and love one another as Jesus loved them. Be willing and ready to help others. Believe and trust and have faith in God. My plan as to evangelism is the preaching mission. With the period of friendly canvas to make people feel welcomed. The period of public worship to get all interested and concerned and to take, take a part. Then the visiting period means so much to me. To get acquainted and with heart-to-heart -heart talks, to share with them in their ways of living and show them a better way. Then last but not least, the training of the new converts, showing them their duty, the duty of the church to stand behind them and then back them up. Give each one something to do. Be willing and ready to do little things as well as the big things. Be loyal and faithful and true. Trusting in God to lead, guide, and direct by His Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. So that's the message from Reverend Waller about being an evangelist. Carol said that the other thing that he always did before or after the, the message was given was that he had an altar call. And I know that we've had altar calls before, but not on a regular basis. So I wanted to present the altar to you today. And I thought of, the one thing I thought was her father up, her grandfather up here, and telling you how important it is to come to know Jesus. And I thought of also, there's a song right now that's out. Now I know it's about, it's about the, uh, coming to the table but the table can also be Jesus and it's from uh, it's from uh, uh, sidewalk prophets and it says some of the some of the verses are so that sin and shame that you that you brought with you you can leave it at the door and let mercy draw you near just come to the table come join the sinners you have now been redeemed take your place beside the Savior now sit down sit down and be and be set free and I think of Billy Graham when I got to go see Billy Graham and at the end of his service he invited people to come forward and it wasn't about his service it wasn't about his preaching it was about the fact that he asked people to come forward that was his real meaning that he wanted so I ask that if you want to come forward that the altar is open and as we sing our last hymn I ask you to join in that and also if the if the burden is there if there is a weight on your shoulder to come to come and, and bring Jesus into your life
So we go, we go in the name of the Lord. From Colossians 3, 16 and 17. Let the message of God dwell among you richly as you teach and abolish, admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, wh whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Amen.